Algebra class, let's go ahead and knock out your homework. I got all the odd ones. It says in exercise 7 through 10, determine whether the tables represent a linear or expo exponential function, exponential function, and then explain. Uh, as I see over here, everything, and the x column is increasing by 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. But, and everything in the y column is increasing by 2. Uh, negative 2 uh, plus 2 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So uh, since uh, x is increasing by 1 and y is increasing by 2, the rate of change is constant. So the function is linear. Uh, you have number 8. I'm going to do number 9. <clears throat> number 9, x is being increased by 1 again. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. But on the bottom, I see that 2.5 goes to 1. Uh, if I said it was adding, it would have to add um, 0.75 to it. And that's definitely not what happened here. If it were 1 plus 0.75 would be 1.75, not 2. So it looks like what they did here is multiply 0.25 by um, 4. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the easier way to do this, if you can't figure it out, is say 1 divided by this number, and that will give you the number that they multiplied it to. So that's 4, and then 1 times 4 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. So as x increases by 1, y is multiplied by 4, uh, the function is exponential. All right, I've got number 11 to do. On this one, it says that, the, let's see, evaluate the function for the given value of x. Uh, if x is 2, that means I'm going to replace this x with 2. And they're, they're wanting me to tell you what y is. Well, that's going to be 3 to the second power. And uh, 3 to the second power is 3 times 3, which is 9. All right, let's um, see, 12, 13 is down here. Uh, this time I'm taking x over here, making it 2. Uh, as well. So this is going to be, let's see, a 25, because 5 times 5, 5 is 25. And you're multiplying 5 times negative 4. Uh, well, 25 times negative 4 would be negative 100. And that's it. Can't do nothing else. Well, uh, 14 is yours. I have number 15. Over here, I have 1 third times x to the x power. x, though, is 3. Uh, so over here, uh, we're taking 6 multiplied to itself 3 times. Well, I know that, um, let's see, 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 6, uh, let's see, that's going to be 216. Now we take one-third of 216. So we have to take 216 and divide it by 3. Uh, if we divide it by 3, we should get something like... Uh, I think in 72. Yeah, 72. All right, um, that's it. Let's go on to the next set, which is 11 through 18. It says evaluate the function for the given value of x. All right, so again, we're saying x is 3 over 2 this time. Uh, we learned from our last lesson, this is going to mean that we've got, um, well, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I don't do number 16. I'm supposed to do number 17. Uh, I'm glad that I clicked it before I gave it away. So over here, uh, x is negative 1 half. So that means uh, we're taking uh, the 9 and we're putting, because this is a negative, remember that, that we're going to be taking uh, the 9 and putting it at, at the bottom. And uh, this will put a 1 over here and a 2 over here. So we're squaring 9. Uh, or we're finding the square root of 9, I should say. So now we have 1 over the square root of 9. Remember that negative made the 9 go to the bottom. This 2 right here uh, is what made this square. And now we're going to go ahead and multiply this to 18, right? So uh, we know the square root of 9 is 3. And uh, so this is going to be 1 third of 18. This should give us negative 6 as an answer. And that's it. All right, uh, 16th and 8th, or I'm sorry, it's number 16 and 18 are yours to do. Let's move on. 
Uh, now it says, in exercise 1920, the table represents an exponential function, graph the function. So if I'm graphing this function, when x is negative 2, y will be 1. When x is negative 1, y will be 2. When x is 0, y will be 4. And when x is 1, y will be 8. This is definitely exponential because we're multiplying everything over here by 2. So if we graph this, uh, we see we're going to get a curve like this. Okay? Again, when x was negative 2, y was 1, you're going to notice everything's going up by 4s on this on the y-axis, right? Because if this is 8, this must be 4, so 1 is going to be somewhere down here, right? And then when x is negative 1, um, it says y will be 2, so this would be negative 1. This is about halfway across, so that's 2. When x is 0, y will be 4, and when x is 1, y will be 8. And you see that curve that comes up. Uh, so the function of x is uh, 4 times uh, 2 to the x power, okay? Um, and that x power means whatever we make x into, that's what we're going to have to follow, right? <clears throat> um, let's see here. Yeah, because when it was negative 2, this would have been a negative 4, right? Um, let's see. Actually, if this was a negative 2, it would have been 1 over 4 because that would have brought this 2 down here, multiplied it to itself, that would have been 1 over 4, right? Just so you understand what they're doing here. Uh, this would equal uh, 4 times 1 over uh, 2 to the 2, right? This is, if we were doing this by, if x was negative 2, right? Because, because it's negative, it would go to the bottom. Then we'd have 4 times uh, 1 over 4, because this would be 2 times 2. And then we'd have 4 times 1. That would be 4 over 4, which equals 1. And that's where they said, right, that y would equal 1. Right? And if you plug each of these numbers in, you're going to find the y value coming out like that. All right, let's uh, move on. It says in exercise 21 through 30, graph the function. Compare the graph to the graph of the parent function. Identify the y-intercept and asym as asym ah, asymptotes of the graph. Uh, find the domain and range of f. So in this one, uh, we're just going to go ahead and find different numbers for x. We'll start at negative 2, then negative 1, then 0, and then 1, and then 2. All right? negative 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then we're going to take them and replace x with it. So negative 2 will be here, negative 1 will be here, and so on. Then we're going to solve it. Well, remember, uh, when it's a negative, it's going to go to the bottom. So this would be 1 over 64. Uh, this The negative 1 on the bottom make this 1 over 8. A 0 makes this anything to the 0 is 1. Then uh, this to the 1 would just be 8, and this to the 2 would be 64. And when we go to graph this, remember, when x is negative 2, uh, y is going to be 1 over 64. When x is negative 1, y is going to be 1 8, and when x is 0, y is going to be 1. You see how that's following right there? Okay? Uh, and when x is 0, y will be 1. And because this is 4, right, that means this must be 2, and as you can see right there at the halfway mark, here's where we got that. Uh, and then when uh, x is 1, that would be uh, 8, right? So when x is 1, it's 8. And then when x is 2, if you follow it way up there, it would turn into 64. All right? Um, now, how does this compare uh, to the parent function? Well, the parent function um, is going to be See, the graph of f is the same as the graph of the parent function. Uh, the y-intercept is 1, okay? Uh, and the uh, asymptote, uh, asymptote, uh, asymptote, uh, the asymptote is the x-axis, okay? Uh, from the graph, you can see that the domain 
is all real numbers, and the range is uh, y is greater than zero. Right? This is going to continue to go on here forever, and it might take a little while to get there, but it will. And then uh, over here, it's only going up from zero up, so above zero. Uh, number 22 is for you to do. And you might have wondered why it was the parent function. Notice there's no negative here. There's no parentheses here with a number outside of it, like over here. And that's what we learned in the lesson that we were talking about. It causes uh, stretching and shrinking as far as reflection. None of that exists here. So it's the exact same one. Uh, number 23. Uh, this time we got that negative in front here, right? So this is going to give us a reflection. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take x and make it negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We're going to replace uh, the x in here with those numbers. And then we're going to solve it. Um, because this is in a negative, uh, this is going to put this at the bottom. So we're going to have negative 4 times negative 4. <coughs> in actuality, there's no parentheses around this. So I think it's just going to be a negative 16 on the bottom, 1 over negative 16. There you go. And then over here, again, there's no parentheses around here, so it won't be negative 4 uh, times negative 4 here. Uh, this one would just be uh, the negative in front, and the negative 1 here means the 4 will go on the bottom. Okay? Anything with 0 power is 1. Remember, there's no parentheses around the... Uh, negative, so it would be a negative one. Uh, this is going to be a negative four, and this will be a negative 16. Now when we graph this, it's going to look like this. All the numbers are curving downward because we're getting bigger negative numbers. And this time we can say, we can compare it to the parent function, to the parent function, which is 4x. So the parent function is gx equals 4x. The graph of f is a reflection in the x-axis of the graph of g. The y-intercept of the graph of f, which is negative 1, is below the y-intercept of the graph of g, uh, um, which is 1. The x-axis is an asym asymptote, I'm going to get used to saying that sooner or later, of both the graphs of f and g, right? Uh, from the graph of f. So you can see that the domain is all real numbers and the domain is going to be, remember that's x, right? And since this is getting bigger and bigger eventually, it was all real numbers and the range is going to be less than zero for this particular uh, function here. Now, how does it compare to the parent function? Remember the parent function is going to be positive for us, which means this line would have been going this way. So that's why it's a reflection. All right, uh, 24 is yours to do. 25, this time we have a number in front, which means we're either going to be shrinking or we're going to be uh, stretching. So again, we're going to replace x with all with negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. These are the easiest numbers to use. Um, and then we have the 3 times 0 0.05, the negative 2. That's going to put this 0.5 on the bottom. 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 would be... 0.25, 1 over 0.25, and then we're multiplying that to 3. So um, 0.25, 3 over uh, 0.25 will give us 12. And then we're going to have, um, let's see, this one's going to give us 3 times 1 over 0.5, which will give us 6. This, uh, anything to the 0 is 1, and 1 times 3 is 3. Uh, 1 times 0. 0.5 is 0. 0.5, and 0. 0.5 times 3, that's going to give us 3 over 2. And then this is uh, 0. 0.5 times 0. 0.5, which is 0. 0.25, and 0. 0.25 times 3 is 3 over 4. Now we're going to go ahead and put this in a graph. So when x is negative 2, this time uh, y is going to be 12. And when x is negative 1, y is going to be 6. And when x is 0, y is going to be 3. And these other numbers follow, and that's why we get this curve 
uh, from here uh, going toward the zero, uh, 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 the zero on y as it, uh, x goes to infinity. All right. So the parent function is going to be 0.5x. So the parent function g of x is 0.5x. The graph of f is a vertical stretch. Okay, vertical stretch. Uh, let's see by a factor of three. And that's easy because we have a three right in front. Okay, factor three of the graph of G. Uh, the y-intercept of the graph of F is three, right there, the y-intercept is three, uh, is above the y-intercept of the graph of G, which is one. So um, remember, when the parent function would have had this to Remember, when this is 0, this would have been, um, let's see, well, anything to 0 is 1. So that would have put that straight at 1, okay, which would have been actually down here because these are all going up by 2s. Um, let's see. So um, the x-axis is an asymptote, asymptote, of both the graphs of f and g, okay? The x-axis is the asymptote of both the graphs of f and g. In other words, uh, they both go uh, running along it, okay? And then um, from the graph of f, you can see that the domain is all real numbers, because this is going to go infinitely this way. This may go up, but it's going to go infinitely in that direction, right? So all real numbers. And uh, the uh, range is going to be, well, y is always going to be greater than zero, right? All these numbers will be greater than zero. All right. Um, let's see. Number 26 is yours to do. I'm number 27. Uh, this time, it looks like we're probably going to get a shrink. We got one half here. Um, let's go ahead and work this out again. We're going to get our table, and we're going to go negative 2 through uh, 2. Uh, when we do, when we solve all these, we're going to get um, 1 over 128, 1 over 16, 1 over 2, 4, and 32. When we graph these, uh, we see that it's, we're going to get a curve like this. Okay? Um, and... You see right here when x is 1, y was 4, right? When x is 1, these are going up by 4 because this is 8. This must be 4, right? And then 2 was 32, which means way up here crossing 32, right? And the rest of these are pretty microscopic. You're, you're not going to be able to go ahead and really gauge those unless you have like a, a, uh, some type of uh, microscope. Uh, but all in all, now the parent function is going to be 8 of x. Okay, right? so the graph is a vertical shrink, like I said. It's less than one, so this is going to be a shrink. Um, let's see, uh, of the graph of G by a factor of one half. One half. The factor is easy to see. It's what's being multiplied to that uh, base. The y-intercept of the graph of F is one half, is below the y-intercept of the graph of G, which is one. The x-axis is the asymptote of both the graphs of f and g. From the graph of f, you can see that the domain is all real numbers, and the range is greater than zero. Okay? Again, all real numbers. It's going to continue to go this way, just gradually. And uh, the range is going to be this way, all numbers that are greater than zero. All right, 28 years to do. 29. Uh, this time we're going to have a stretch because it's bigger than one. Uh, we have three over two or three over four here. So when we do this, uh, remember this is going to uh, be applied to both of these, which is going to bring the um, bring the four up top and the three on the bottom, right? Um, and then, well, the four up top is going to be sixteen, and the bottom number is going to be uh, nine, right? 
and uh, let's just see if this rations out this way. Uh, if I was, to, I'm just going to work this one right here, okay? So if I have uh, two to the three over four to the negative two, that means that this three and the four both get the negative two applied. Uh, because they're both negative, you're going to be swapping them to the opposite side to make them positive. So this should be two times, uh, let's see, four to the second over three to the second. All right, uh, that should give you two times, uh, we've got 16 over nine. And two times 16 would be um, let's see, 2 times 16 would be 32 over 9. And I would say, how many times does 9 go into 32? Well, 9 goes into 32 three times, leaving you with 5. And so you would have 3 and 5 over 9. And that's exactly how they got that one there. Uh, work these same, use the same way, okay? I just wanted to show you how they got that one in case you kind of got confused there. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and make the graph. When we make the graph, we see that, um, once again, <clears throat> when this is negative 2, right? Negative 2 is going to be right about here. This is going to be 3 and 5 ninths, which means it doesn't quite get up to 4, right? Uh, this one here, when it's negative one, it's going to be two and two thirds. So that would be about right here, two and two thirds. Uh, when it's zero, it'll be two. So zero to be right there, two. Uh, when it's one, it'll be one and one half. You see, it just gets smaller and smaller. All right. So the parent function is three over four x. Right. And uh, we know that. We got two here, so that's just going to be a stretch because it's more than two, or more than one, excuse me. Uh, and then we can say that the domain is going to be all real numbers again, and the range is going to be greater than y, right? Or greater than zero, excuse me. So domain all real numbers, and the range is greater than zero. All right, uh, from the 30 zeros, I'm going to go to... Number 31, describe and correct the error uh, in finding the domain and the range of G. It says the domain is uh, X is less than zero, okay? And remember, domain is this way, right? And the range is this way. So this is wrong because they're trying to say that it's going to be uh, less than zero. And in actuality, this is going to go on forever this way. This goes on forever this way. So the domain is all real numbers, and the range is actually going to be uh, less than zero. So let's see here. The domain and range values are reversed. The domain is all real numbers, and the range is y is less than zero. All right, you have number 32 to do. I'll see you in class uh, where we'll begin our next lesson. Have a great night, and uh, see you tomorrow.